Inorganic farming is more efficient than organic farming. My name is Kyla Johnson and I'm going to be talking about the differences of organic and inorganic farming. So to give you a little bit of background, I was raised on an inorganic farm. My dad plants soybeans and corn every year and we also have beef cows. Um, I've been raised eating GMOs, you know, seedless watermelon, stuff like that my whole life and I don't believe that they are less nutritious than non-GMOs. So what is organic farming? Organic farming is the practice of agriculture that relies on techniques such as crop rotation, green manure, compost, and biological pest control rather than using pesticides to do so. So basically, with inorganic farming, you use pesticides and you get your crops sprayed every year in order to ward off pests, you know, bugs, weeds, stuff like that so that it's easier and more efficient when you go to harvest your crops. And organic farming uses something called herbicides. So the main difference between pesticides and herbicides is that herbicides use something ca called copper sulfates. Um, they use copper sulfates because technically they're still organic since they are a natural compound. So some effects of copper sulfates on the body are eye irritation, nausea, vomiting, body tissue damage. It also causes damage to blood cells, the liver, kidneys, and can even lead to death. It has also been linked to cancers, according to the National Pest Information Center. So, not good stuff. Um, and so now I'm going to talk about something that's a little bit heavy to the heart for me. Um, imagine the size of India. It's about 1.3 billion people, and if we switch to completely organic farming, we would lose the entire population of India to hunger. I'm not saying that just people from India would die, but mostly people who are in poverty, stuff like that, can't get to organics, um, they're going to die of hunger because we're going to be producing 25% less food, all GMO products, everything that's produced on inorganic farms, we're going to be producing 25% less of that if we switch to just inorganics. Um, and we will lose 1.3 billion people to hunger, according to Nutrition Wonderland, if we completely switch to organic farming and don't make up for the loss. So on to my next point about the loss. Um, we already lose about 1% of our rainforest every single year to deforestation and about 50% of the rainforest have been lost since we've become an industrialized country. Um, they make up less than 2% of our world's land but they make up for about 50% of the resources that we use. So in order to make up for the loss that we would have in area just of inorganic farms, we would have to create somehow 360 square, 360,000 square miles of farmland. And how are we going to do that? Deforestation. So we already use deforestation a lot, you know, cutting down trees, stuff like that. And in order to create more farmland, we'd have to do the same thing, only on a broader scale. So we would lose 360 square miles of the rainforest, which is approximately the same size as Peru, which is this country right here. So we would lose all of that to deforestation in order to make up for our loss. So now I'm going to talk about the costs. So everybody knows that when you walk into a grocery store and you see something marked organic, it's going to be a couple dollars more than anything that's not marked organic. So why is that? Well, one of the main reasons is that it costs more to produce the same thing on an organic farm versus on an inorganic farm. As you can see by this graph, it's almost, it's almost $5 more per bushel for corn, and it's the same pretty much for soybeans, almost $5 more per bushel. So that's a big difference. So it costs that much more to make them. So obviously if it costs more to make something, it's going to cost more to buy them. Which, going back to my point before, means that people who earn less money and are in poverty are going to have an even harder time buying food for their families and more people are going to die of hunger. So one other thing that I wanted to talk about are GMOs. Um, I didn't really talk about them before, but that's another difference between organic and inorganic farming is that inorganics um, use a lot of GMOs. GMOs are genetically modified organisms. Something that you might think about right away are seedless watermelons, seedless grapes, or if you've ever heard grapples before, it's a mix of grapes and apples. Um, it's this really cool thing where we use science to our advantage to create foods that haven't been created before. Um, and about 80% of all food, according to the non-GMO project, are GMOs. 
Thank you for watching and I hope that you learned something new.